past few weeks, we have witnessed something truly awful take place in our country. We have witnessed mob rule on the streets, as well as a completely unacceptable, weak response from our government. A group calling itself Black Lives Matter have rioted, looted, destroyed people's businesses and livelihoods, including, of course, black people's livelihoods, across the United States. Now such behaviour has been repeated in the UK. This group was formed in 2016, but was set alight in 2020 with the unfortunate death of career criminal George Floyd. Now, let us be clear. The death of Mr Floyd was wrong and is rightly condemned by all decent people. Black Lives Matter, however, have used this incident to present a false narrative to the world. Their insistence that black people are targeted and deliberately subjected to violence by the US police is simply untrue. In fact, statistics routinely show that more white people are killed by police in the United States than black people are. The narrative is a lie. There is no targeting of black people by police in the United States and there is certainly no targeting of black people by police in the United Kingdom. Nor is the United Kingdom a racist country. Here in Britain all are equal. All people, whether black or white, male or female, have the same opportunities to make a success of their lives. Success is there for those who work for it, irrespective of the colour of their skin. Black Lives Matter furthermore makes the false claim that the democratic and capitalist system favours white people over black. This is what is described as systemic or structural racism. It too is a lie. This too is a false narrative and one that is deeply insulting to the black people who have worked and sacrificed for their success. Scratch the surface of Black Lives Matter and their true agenda becomes clear. It is capitalism they oppose, not racism. Black Lives Matter have raised no voice at all, have been completely silent about black crime towards other black people or indeed the continued enslavement of black people throughout the world today. Their only concern is for slavery that ended years ago, brought to an end by the British Empire and indeed by the United States, the two countries most heavily targeted by Black Lives Matter. When an organisation attacks the only two countries that historically ended slavery while ignoring enslavement today, you know that their concern is not for slaves, and it's certainly not for black people. Their intention is not to put right the wrongs of the past, but to attack and punish countries that practice democracy and capitalism. Black Lives Matter intend to turn Great Britain into a communist country, and we must never, ever, ever allow them to do so. Communism is a hellish system. Everywhere it has been tried has brought misery, state oppression and death. Communist states are prison states where dissent or disagreement is severely punished and where leaders live in luxury while the people starve. Every time this has been the result. If we do not want Britain to become a communist country, then we must oppose Black Lives Matter. And we must do it now. But this won't be easy. We know this. It will take great courage. Luckily, however, this country is filled with courageous people. The kind of courage that was epitomised in one of our most revered historical figures, Mr Winston Churchill. Churchill led Great Britain through its darkest hour. While Nazi bombs were falling on the British people, and the rest of Europe had already been conquered. Winston Churchill bore the responsibility to face up to fascism in Europe and bring it down. He succeeded. In honour of this, a large statue stands in central London. 
It commemorates not only Mr. Churchill himself, but all of those who struggled, fought, suffered and died at the hands of Nazi Germany. It is a symbol of Britain. It is a symbol of a Britain that knew who it was, that was united and patriotic, and with people who stood side by side in determination to keep this country free. Now, this statue and all it represents have been made invisible. Churchill no longer stands tall, overlooking the Houses of Parliament. Instead, he has been shunned, pushed aside, covered in a metal box, unseen, and all of it with the consent of our government. While Black Lives Matter criminals were defacing the statue of Churchill, police stood by and watched. While Black Lives Matter criminals were defacing memorials to those who died for Britain, Boris Johnson did nothing. While Black Lives Matter criminals assaulted our heritage up and down the land, Pretty Patel did nothing. A serious assault on the identity of Britain took place and our leaders did nothing. What has become of Great Britain? What has become of the memory of Winston Churchill? Why does Black Lives Matter so despise this great British hero? Because of what he represents, Britain. As George Orwell so brilliantly predicted, the communists are on the march and they intend to bring our culture and way of life to an end. To do so, they intend to erase and rewrite history. Churchill, they say, was a racist. What a childish, immature view of the world this is. Human beings change. Our views change. They have always changed with time and they always will. In Churchill's day, it would probably be accurate to state that most people were what we now know as racist. That's simply how it was. The world was much larger. People did not migrate in the same numbers. Different peoples were separate and had little understanding of each other or even knowledge of each other's existence. It was a completely different time. Racism as a concept did not exist, nor did homophobia or transphobia or any of the other phobias now posthumously applied to people of the past. It is also true to say that racism is not limited to 20th century Europe. Racism exists all over the world. Racist views are held by people from all demographic groups. Some white people are racist, some black people are racist. Chinese, Arab, you name it, you will find racists there. Past wrongdoing is also not limited to 20th century Europe. There is not a single country on this planet that can claim sainthood. No country, no group, no demographic, all are guilty of wrongdoing at some time or another. Not all, however, can claim to have banned slavery in a multitude of countries around the world, but Britain can. Not all can claim to have abolished slavery across the Atlantic, but America can. These are things that Britain must be proud of and must remember. This is our true heritage, ending slavery and fighting fascism. Let us focus on the good while remembering never to repeat the bad. I say it will take courage to stand up to Black Lives Matter because it will. And it will because it means going against one of the most powerful and most dangerous movements to emerge in many years. Its success is derived from its lies. And those lies are too threatening to most of our politicians who either bow down in submission or who ignore the threat altogether. Big companies, mainstream media, football, all have capitulated. We are told that silence is violence. The meaning of this is clear. Those who do not openly express and voice their support for Black Lives Matter, who do not say what they are told to say by Black Lives Matter, become the enemy of this extremely sinister group. But perhaps most tragic of all is our government. Who would ever have predicted that a conservative government under Boris Johnson 
would stand by and do nothing while British history is dismantled? Who would have predicted that Boris Johnson would in fact do worse than nothing? He has legitimised Black Lives Matter. He has agreed to push their false narrative without question, despite the obvious threat it poses to the future of our nation. Shame on Boris Johnson and shame on the Conservative Party. It is now clear that the great patriotic British people have no representation in Parliament. Parliament is lost. It has been taken from the people. For Britain intends to take it back. What we must do now to save our country is simple. There isn't anything complex about it. And For Britain's manifesto contains all of the answers. Firstly, we must speak the truth about extreme left-wing groups like Black Lives Matter. We must not continue to simply limp along with the false media narrative. Leaders speak truth when necessary, and it is now necessary. And our leaders have proven themselves incapable or unwilling to speak up. Secondly, we must replace those who lead the police and reverse these decades of politicisation and bias. Police will once again be forced to uphold the law without fear, without favour and without political preference. A cultural shift in policing is urgently needed, and this can only happen under new leadership. Cressida Dick failed to protect London's monuments, and therefore failed to enforce the law. She must be replaced, urgently. We must also reform our schools and rebuild our sense of unity. Children are taught in Britain's schools to despise their own country. Those people who go out and destroy statues and memorials have no regard for the history of their own people. No desire to respect it or commemorate it or remember it. None. For Britain will teach British children the value of their past. They will be taught of Britain's great achievements and contributions to the world. They will be taught love and respect, not hate and contempt. Finally, we must defend our way of life democracy, capitalism and liberty. This is who we are and it is who we will remain. We must and will fight for truth over deception, justice over arbitrary punishment and freedom over slavery. For Britain will never take the knee or apologise or offer reparation or stand by while our memorials are destroyed, ever. We will instead go to the ballot box. We will oppose the councillors who agree to dismantle our heritage and we will replace them. We will go out to the British people and tell them, no, you're not alone. You're not crazy. What you see is real. The threat to us is real. And yes, sadly, Parliament is agreeing, has agreed to our destruction. And so we have no option but to replace the members of parliament. This is our mission, this is our task, and we will succeed. Join us. Thank you.